Hello, I'm Dr. Paulita Brooker, Associate Provost for Online Learning and Continuing Education here at Houston Baptist University. We're here to start talking about emerging technologies, the trends, the settings, how we apply those, when we apply those, what are they, obviously, is going to be our first question. So let's think about it for a minute. We are now living in a society that is more and more connected to technology. We want to be the first. We want to be innovative. We want to be the ones that keep up with what's going on in the field. So why is that? Did anyone here buy the iPhone 11, stand in line to be there and have it the first day it came on the market? Or maybe if you didn't, you know someone who did. It's more and more important to us that we stay always in the forefront of technology and that we don't want to feel like we're left behind. But do we ask, do we want to do the work or do we want the technology to do the work for us? And what does that even mean? Um, we can't just learn about the tools. We also have to learn about their impact. How do they affect what we're trying to do or are they making things easier for us? This is a topic about more than education, but let's start there, shall we? So let's take just a minute and I'm gonna ask, what do you think about or of when we use the term emerging technologies? So just take a second and jot down the top three things, the first three things that come to your mind when we ask that question. All right, then, now that we've done that, let's explore a little further. Because we do rely more on technology, we want to be connected. Our students are also accustomed to having that connection, to always having that information at their fingertips. How often do they go to Google to find out the information that they need? I know I do. My husband calls me the fastest Google in the West because every time we have a question in our conversations, I just look it up. How many of you have young children? How much have you heard or read about what screen time is doing to their brains and how that affects their learning? It's a critical and important issue for us to discuss. Bottom line is technology has changed the way students learn. It's in fact so important that it's been estimated that each year institutions spend 13.2 billion dollars that's each year on educational technology let's just let that sink in for a second it is more and more important and one of the first places that we've seen that impacted is in what we call blended learning now blended learning means that the instructor is in his classroom face to face and they incorporate technology into the activities that the students are going through in the classroom. It may be something through their phones, an app, somehow they're interacting using the technology. We know the students have the phones with them. We ask them to put them away, but more and more faculty are learning that they can use that to actually engage the students. How many of you have ever participated or heard of Kahoot? That's one that you may be familiar with. And that's an example of one of those technology tools that's used to become a blended learning environment. There's a difference when we talk about hybrid learning. Now, hybrid learning means that we have part of the work done online and part of the work done in the classroom. And there is a distinct definition or parameter for it to be considered hybrid. And that is that 50% or less of the work is done online. That's actually something that we have to explain or show the work that's being done and what the percentages are for our accreditors. So hybrid has a specific definition and parameter. And again, if it goes over that 50%, it becomes online. Even if it's 60% online and 40% in the classroom, it's not hybrid anymore, it's online. So that's a distinction that we always need to keep in mind. What about emerging technologies and the reliance on them when it comes to 
credentialing, professional credentials or competencies that people are looking for to either further their job possibilities or to enhance what they do on their current jobs. It's actually become very important in the whole context of what is the value of a college education. That's been a very important conversation that's been occurring across our country and in our society that asks, is it really worth it? Do employers really care so much about you having a degree as they do about the fact that you have certain skills or credentials or competencies? And if an individual is looking for those, where do they find them? How do they go about acquiring those? So let's take another minute and I'm going to ask you to think about a couple of ways that you know of where folks can go to acquire some of these credentials. So just jot those down real quick. So the final piece we want to think about when we're talking about all these different technologies and how they're being used and how they're being applied is how do we sell our stakeholders? How do we convince people that we need to adopt these? There's always going to be naysayers. There will always be people who think they have an idea or a technology or a use that may be better than the one you may think is important or applicable. So being able to understand how it's used, how it will be, what it will produce, what it will cost, all the different pieces that would go into assessing a technology and whether or not it's applicable to whatever setting, whether it's a human resources training, whether it's credentialing, whether it's mobile learning, whether it's part of a classroom or whether it's in the online learning environment. Being able to analyze and lay all those pieces out are gonna also be an important part of what we're going to discuss and accomplish as part of this class. So that it will always be something that you are able to rationalize and convince is important for your audience. So sit back and let's have fun with this.